Uh, good morning, everyone. It's good to be here. Um, I'm, uh, this is, I believe, my fourth uh, Emerging MedTech meeting. It gets better every year. I'm excited. I want to congratulate Scott and the, <clears throat> the team for this. I think it's actually a little bit of an interesting coincidence. I used to be a heart surgeon, and I'm following two, two presentations who are trying to put heart surgeons out of business. So I'm glad I'm actually no longer, no longer have to worry about that. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is a, um, a company that we've started, Veris Health, uh, which is in the remote patient monitoring business. We're looking to enhance uh, personalized cancer care through remote patient monitoring. Uh, this is the first time we're pre presenting on this particular um, uh, project or company. Uh, we've previously presented, uh, we have a parent company, PavMed, which is a NASDAQ listed company that's a diversified company, a commercial stage in multiple areas, including devices, diagnostics, and digital health. So today we're going to talk mostly about the digital health and the device side of things. Uh, PavMed, as I mentioned, is, a, <clears throat> is, the, is the parent company. We have a shared services corporate structure. Uh, we have a subsidiary Lucid Diagnostics, which I talked about last year. And uh, today we're talking about Veris Health, which is privately held. So Veris Health is a commercial stage digital health company. We're focused on enhancing, enhancing cancer care. Um, and really, just to put that in a bit of a broader context, there's a panel that I'm participating in later today. Uh, I believe, as a former, as a physician and a former practicing physician, that we're in the midst of a revolution in how we are going to be taking care of patients moving forward about transitioning from episodic care in a physician's office to bringing the collection of data and the reporting of symptoms from patients in a continuous manner uh, to their caretakers. And this is part of what, what we believe is a broader project there. Cancer patients in particular face high rates of complications, which drive poor patient outcomes and healthcare costs. Uh, these are expensive, as you might imagine, about $70,000 per hospitalization, and at least 50% of them are avoidable. So we're looking to improve outcomes through innovative RPM or remote, remote patient monitoring tools. There's actually really good data about the, imp the actual clinical impact of this. I won't go through each of these slides, but just to give you the overall picture, we actually have published data. Shockingly, honestly, when we acquired this technology, this is the data that jumped out at me more than anything, which is that if you put a Fitbit on a cancer patient and you just monitor their activity level, even acknowledging as the bottom panel shows that compliance is not great, you maybe you'll get a third of people to actually wear it during the entire period of time, but just getting actual uh, continuous data, even on a subset of patients, has an impact on clinical outcomes and even survival. And this, in the one study, the impact of just tracking um, uh, patient information or, or physiologic data had an impact on survival that was comparable to the chemotherapy itself. Uh, so, uh, so we know that this works and there's an opportunity to move forward on that and we have technologies to do so. So Veris Health Solution is as follows. We have two components to it, one which is active and currently being commercialized and one which is in progress and we hope to launch next year. And it's combining a cancer care platform, a digital health platform that includes a smartphone app for the patient <clears throat> as well as their caretakers and loved ones, a, a, a cloud-based um, clinician platform, and a, and a box, a branded box, of external connected devices that allow the patients to check their heart rate, their temperature, their weight, oxygen saturation, um, activity, and, and blood pressure. And uh, that's what we've launched uh, today, um, the Veris CCP. <clears throat> uh, but the key for our long-term vision is to actually transition to an implantable monitor. We have a RPM implantable physiologic monitor that's currently in progress. We have a clear path through FDA to get that. Uh, and it, the key here is that about half of these patients require implantation of a port, of a chemotherapy Report. So we felt there was an opportunity, since they're undergoing that procedure anyway, to convert what's a dumb port into a smart port, a port that can actually be collecting data and transmitting it to their patients. And you can see our design here involves what looks like on the right, a fairly traditional implantable cardiac monitor, but it has a design in place so that you can actually implant, uh, you can actually um, uh, mate a uh, chemotherapy port with it and implant them at the same time. A couple of recent highlights, we've executed our first commercial pro um, contract late last year, it's live, we have patients that are tr transmitting physiologic data right now, it's, we have, uh, we have you know, really good reports about the, the adoption and the feedback from patients. Um, patient, uh, practices are billing for these services and, it, and, and we're, we're also receiving payments under this recurring revenue business model. Patient experience is great. The, the, the app is really, really nice. It includes uh, both a reporting of symptoms, um, uh, EPRO, which is a, um, a term used in the space, uh, as well as general health and quality of life parameters, and as well as drilling down a bit more on symptoms uh, as opposed to just highlighting what those individually are. 
The clinician portal is uh, designed to sit on top of the EHR and to be the front end of how the clinicians interact with their patients. I won't go through all the details here. It has a telehealth component to it, so when they see abnormalities, they can immediately contact the patient and, 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 and interact with them that way, and has all sorts of trends and alerting and pulls in data from the EHR and a whole variety of other ways to make their life simple. It was designed by the founder of the company we acquired, who's an oncologist himself. Our commercial growth strategy, there are about 12,000 uh, 12, oncologists, 2,000 practices, about 2 million diagnoses a year, and we're target, targeting this larger market opportunity by focusing initially on independent oncology practices and those who are focused already on value-based uh, platforms that, are, that have been offered by Medicare as well as uh, private payers. The business model is super attractive. Uh, this is, we get to operate within an existing billing environment. We get to offer this as software as a service. It's recurring revenue. We've established these codes on the right. You can see the, the bottom line number is that if a, if a physician practice does this correctly, they can collect about $200 a month per patient. Um, <clears throat> if the patients are compliant in terms of transmitting this data. And uh, we have a subscription model where we effectively split that 50-50 with the practice. Uh, there are additional revenue opportunities as well with enhanced technical support. We're considering providing some clinical support to allow the, the practices to handle the extra flow of information. And then obviously when we have the implantable, implantable device, that'll add to the overall market opportunity, which is now, uh, we estimated about $2, $2 billion. The implantable physiologic monitor is on the way. Uh, we have um, a clear path through FDA. We've had about a half a dozen pre-submission meetings with them. We're using existing implantable cardiac monitors as our predicate, and um, <clears throat> we expect to um, to uh, have this uh, submitted to FDA by the end of this year. And a key element of this, in addition to obviously the clinical impact of being able to measure these uh, various parameters as I've listed here, is that from a, the R RPM point of view, it guarantees you 100% compliance. Right now, existing RPM technologies out there, you know, the standard is if you can get 30 or 40% of patients reporting the minimum 16 days a month that they have to report for the physician to be able to bill, um, you know, that's a low number that we don't think is really, you know, acceptable. We should be pushing that higher. And with an implantable device as opposed to wearables and connected devices, you're not dependent on the patient compliance. You, you effectively guarantee 100% compliance, which maximizes the economic uh, business model that I previously described. So we're excited to get this submitted and on board by, um, and in, in the market um, early next year. Uh, the competitive landscape is as follows. There are a variety of other companies. I mean, digital health is a booming, is a booming <coughs> uh, area right now. Uh, there really are no other companies right now that are, uh, except perhaps for Jasper, that have all the elements with regard to e EHR integration, focusing on oncology, uh, having at-home at uh, technologies that are, that are designed to facilitate RPM. Uh, none of them, of course, actually um, uh, will be where we are next year with uh, regard to a continuous RPM implantable. Uh, the feedback has been fantastic. From, uh, from both physicians who are looking to uh, do this. The, inter the engagement with the, <clears throat> the practices is excellent. We're uh, so maybe a bit surprised, but perhaps not. we shouldn't be surprised that there is a lot of understanding and focus already on remote patient monitoring, that this trend is something that, that practices understand and they understand the impact on their economics uh, moving forward. So it's been a very, it's been a really good um, early st stage of engagement. I'm not going to spend much time on this slide, but obviously with any digital health enterprise, there's a focus on data. We're going to be collecting an enormous amount of that, <clears throat> and there's an opportunity to, to utilize that data both for analytics for, uh, as well as, um, you know, potentially monetize that in a variety, in a variety of settings. We're Building with Veris Health, not simply an oncology program, but a, but a, but a program that is looking to um, um, sort of rinse and repeat and, and focus on other areas where the combination of remote patient monitoring in acute diseases or, or you know, high-risk diseases can have a big impact. There are a variety of settings here. We may have heard about hospital at home, uh, heart failure, end-stage renal disease. We have a microphone built into our system, so we'll be able to listen to heart and breast sounds, which could have an impact on COPD and other, and other care, care opportunities. So with that, I'll wrap it up. Uh, we're, you know, even though Veris is part of a, is a subsidiary of a public company, we're actually still, we actually are looking uh, potentially for partners on the financial side for investments up to about $10 million, as well as, uh, as strategic opportunities to work together. So if there's any interest or comment on that, you can contact me or Varun Agarwal, our VP of BD. So with that, I will, uh, and thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>